Here you go, knuckleheads. I know I gotta play one of my uh, Randy Rhodes guitars, so here's my Sandoval V. He sent it to me like overnight. I ordered another one, and it's crazy, but it's pretty good looking, right? That looks like his guitar. Oh, oh that's weird on the back. Wait, that's too dang small! But there's your friggin' V. See, in the last video I made, I said no one ever comments about this V. They don't question it. Nothing. So I bring it up. Wow, this thing is really inaccurate. <laughs> Look at the back. I got this online for like... It was less than 20 bucks. I know that. Because, you know, they have other ones out that are exact. But this is like an exact copy of a bad... Uh, Chinese one. <laughs> so this is like a Chinese, a copy of a bad Chinese uh, V. But you get the whole thing here with, see how thin it is here? That's fairly accurate. But it's a little, these are actually thinner. His V looks more like a, he wanted it to look like a friggin' arrow. Phew! It was the whole thing. He came up with this idea for the, this headstock. He also came up with the idea for the Jackson headstock. Even though Grover takes uh, credit for that, you know, the Jackson headstock, he's not, that's not how, that's how Randy designed it. He, because he, when he's got, getting onto the Concord, if you know what the Concord is, the nose is down. So, to him, he saw the big tail, just like the Concord. I should have brought it out, but... And then, you know, it's slim, sleek, and then the nose is down. Just like the headstock on the Concord. On all Jacksons, all, all Randy Rhodes Jacksons. That's what he drew for his Concord. He drew the whole thing. From what I remember, and I'm sure it's online, just look it up. But uh, he he went out there, it was like him, I think he took Kevin Dubrow with him. And a couple people, this is for the Concord. I'm not talking about this, the Slim Shady Carl Sandoval. This story is, he went down to Charvel, this is what I heard. And I think I asked Randy about it. I, you know, I didn't really ask him a lot of questions when it was lessons. And when I'd stop, I don't know, I wouldn't think to ask him, so what about the sandal? All I knew, because I asked him, how do you like this? Because I thought Charvel made it for him. Because there's another guy in town in a band called White Sister had the exact same guitars made. Turned out it was Carl, and instead of polka dots, he's got stars. So they're blue. It's a blue guitar with white stars. Looks freaking cool, man. I'm trying to get one made. And I'm gonna see if Sandoval will do it. If he'll do it for a couple thousand, I'll buy another one of his pieces of crap. They're not that bad. He's corrected a lot of the flaws that he had done with Randy's. Because what happened is he went down, Randy went down to get a quote to see how much the V would be. This one. From Charvel. And they gave him, I don't know what, the, I don't know what it was, but whatever the price was, it was higher than 750 I think. I think that's what seven, around 700 750 Randy ended up paying for this. Carl ran after him and said, hey, you know, I can make you one for this price. And I'll do exactly what you want. You know, you just tell me what you want to put in. And at that time, Randy wanted two PAFs, I think. And uh, Dan Electro Neck. Is this, you know, Eddie was doing the same thing. But Eddie had a, like a Hondo Explorer body. 
with a down electro neck only because they're they're straight like this one is fairly straight it, so you're trying to get rid of any curves anything that the string will hang up on so Dingledorf gave him this uh, luckily for Randy he broke the headstock immediately because it's made and Carl fixed it and they he dumped in a super distortion which is the key to all great sound so that's the story about this is Carl actually went out and went behind Charvel's back and he ended up losing his job for it so all he does is make a bunch of V's now he does make other guitars a guy Tracy G you know uh, was in World War three but uh played with Dio for nine years he uh, has I think two or three Sandoval just like uh, what am I thinking of they're just like Eddie Van Halen like strats like modified strats but they're Sandoval's it says Carl Sandoval right on the friggin' I'm like, really? Sandoval? I don't know. Why would you go to him? I mean, is he that good? I don't know. I have I have the one Sandoval. I was just like, wow, this is very unimpressive. So when Jackson put theirs out in ninety seven, I went out went down, bought one. I just went down to Hollywood. <laughs> I called up Jackson. They said, we just shipped out, you know, the first, you know, seven or eight. And uh, Hollywood's got, like, one of the first two, they said. So I'm like, Beep! and it turned out to be number three. So they had the third one. It made, ever. Polkadot V. Jackson, 97, thank you, thank you. Not talking about anything else either. So, and I know I got to talk about Randy stuff, otherwise no one will watch my videos. Jackson shirt. Got a lot of uh, swag, as they say, from them because I go down there. I used to go down there, and bug them all the time when I had a lot of money, and just buy guitars. Just like I want that. I want that. I'd like one of those. Could you do this? Da 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 da. -da. That's how I was able to get that Concord pulled out of the Relic line and just finish it myself. And pfft, that thing sounds amazing. It sounds great. It sounds better than theirs. I've played the full-on Relic, and you're like, it's creepy, for one. I don't like it because it's relic to how Randy's is all... No, that's weird. I don't want somebody else's you know scratches and stuff even though it's very cool and I don't know I, I don't like to think about the whole damn thing to tell you the truth about the way it ended because I was looking up so, so okay I found another bootleg see I have hundreds of them on CD I found this one and I found three of them actually and they were all around the uh, Chicago dates. It was the two, and because he had three, there was the two in Illinois. The one where he bit the bat and lifted Randy up for the tribute photo, and then the next night he keels over during uh, the first song because of rabies. So they had to cancel that show. But I just remember. I'm trying to think which ones do I got so I have the Chicago show so I put it in and uh, it's not the soundboard it's a, it's just another bootleg it's not bad you know but it's not as good as I remember like Randy's playing is is good he just went there and he played I know there was a lot of like record company executives, a lot of people were meeting for this Chicago, I don't can't remember which night, but they just call it the Chicago, even though it wasn't in Chicago, the Chicago, you know, thing for the diary tour, and that's where 
people were giving checks and taking, you know, and all this crap. And uh, that girl that I know that used to date, that guy that is online that says a bunch of stuff that he never did, it was all through his girlfriend that he got, you know, checks and stuff. Picks. Supposedly picks. Do you want to know what a friggin' Randy Rhodes pick looked like? You get... It's basically he would take a Fender Medium. He'd file it down like this. See how that's filed down? Here's a regular pick. Here's this one. He basically file it down like that, then he'd scratch it like this to give it grip, and he never threw them out. So when people are like, you know, I got a Randy Rhodes pick, I know he had a few made. He threw them out in Quiet Riot. It just says Randy Rhodes. Ozzy, as far as I know, I don't know. He might have uh, had some, but. Look in every picture. He's not. He doesn't have any on his guitar. He doesn't have any on the mic stand. Kiss did that. Kiss threw out tons of picks. Cheap Trick started doing it. But Kiss really was a pick throwing band, man. So they're the ones that was st started doing it. I, when I had money, I'd get you know Michael D picks and I. I found a few, actually. I've got like five from uh, Club Days, and I just use them. And I wouldn't put a name, a band name on it, because it, I, I knew it was going to keep changing. But it says Michael D, and on this side is a picture of me. What else could you want? And I just play it, and I throw it out like in the first two songs, and then I get the pick that I would use. And I'm not, I don't have to have mine like this, but it's not bad. In fact, I don't want to use this. So, uh, since I was reading about... So we're going to switch over to Molly Crew and what they should not be doing, which is getting back together to tour. Now, they went out semi, if you could call anything Molly Crew does, class. They went out in 2015, and it was good. I was like, you know what? Cool. You're not dragging the carcass of Motley Crue around the world like somebody else we know, Kiss. Or any band that keeps going and going. And I was watching Rat. You know, Rat was great. In the club days, they were friggin' awesome. And so was Motley Crue. But, you know, I remember going to Girls, 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 and I'm like, that was thoroughly boring I mean you know I was expecting more and it was like well the girls are cute Mick looks very tired <laughs> and you know Nikki was out of his nut and you know earlier a few months earlier I'd been uh, rehearsing with them in the next room Wasp and Motley Crue and my band so it wasn't, you know, a big surprise because I knew, uh, everybody knew. <laughs> Apparently everybody but the band, well, Mick knew, but, uh, it was a surprise to Tommy, or not Tommy, but Vince, I guess. Because Tommy would shoot heroin too, or smoke it or something. He'd snort, I don't know. The movie's weird. I mean, he punches the wrong girl. He, it's all so gay. Uh, not gay. Gay is happy. Sorry, I picked that up. My son and his friends say it all the time. And, you know, they live in a little town in Utah. And if you want to go back 20, 30 years, you just go to a little town in Utah and you're back 20, 30 years. Everybody talks that way. Sorry about that. You know, okay, right, uh. Like, you know, like I said, my best friend was gay. He was the queen of queens. And boy, was he cool. He was the freaking coolest guy. And that's what I want. I wanted to, you know, hang out with this dude and grow up and get old. Just to see what he would look like old and we would both look like. 
Because we pictured ourselves with long hair and, you know, just poser guys that never quite made it. And this was, you know, before I went back into Fatal Attraction for that last try and everything. We were just going to, eh. And even after Fatal Attraction, I was in the Randy Rhodes band and I was in another band, the Terrace 49. I played till I was 30 and then I stopped. And uh, he was going to stop too, but he died when he was 29. So, Tony, man, Tony Rydell, I miss him. So anyways, what I say? Yeah, I think it's a big mistake. Motley Crue is going out on tour. So this is my little Motley, my little Mick uh, 1313 tribute guitar thing. Yes, it's an Epiphone. I don't care. I like Epiphones better than uh, Gibsons. Or whatever. Like, uh, what is a, uh, uh, what's the one? one I was playing up? There's Orville, and there's the other one, and Gibson, that suck. And an Epiphone that is actually pretty good. It's really good. Especially if you can find a Japanese, uh, 1970s Japanese Epiphone like I got. That thing is badass. It's better than any friggin' Gibson. I don't care what anybody says. But please don't take offense because I can't afford to lose any subscriber. Look how close I am. I'm 900 and something. 910, 12, 13. Come on, we can do this. Let's do it before the end of the year. I don't want to ask for subscribers anymore. I just want to get on here and do what you guys want to do. But see, they're, they're not letting me do certain effects. They're not letting me do a lot of things now. It's really... <laughs> Because I'm going for this channel that is going to hopefully start making money again. I've got the views, even though each video, I put it out and it'll get like 40, 50 views. And then it'll go up to 100, and a couple hundred. But I got, you know, ones that are like 118,000, or 20,000, or 65,000, 75,000. Which is really not that much compared to other people. But I just want to get in there and start doing something. And I guess my angle will be the guy that played in the 80s and basically knew everybody, every band. Doesn't mean I knew them well and partied with them. Like, let's talk about Rat. Well, there's very few Rat stories. You know, there's a couple with uh, Robin... Uh, that's really it. I didn't hang out with Rat unless they were hanging out with Motley Crue. Got a ton of Motley Crue stories, but I almost, almost don't want to tell any of them because I'm tired of Motley Crue. I watched that movie several times before it came out. Then I watched the butchered up version, which they took a lot of crap out. And uh, I'm tired of them. But I'm like, okay, good. Okay, let's, that's putting a bow on it they did the last show 15 this is that but the thing that got them was the money they made millions of dollars off the movie and even millions of dollars off people were downloading the hell out of the dirt soundtrack it went up i think their sales went up 250 percent on all the kid the whole catalog and they get all the money because Elektra, like an idiot, gave publishing rights back to uh, Nikki. And it wasn't the guy in the movie that signed him. The fact he, the guy that signed him is a big fat pig. He doesn't look like the guy from Saturday Night Live at all. Just so you know. The guy's a big pig. He was a dork. Uh, he got in the way of a lot of stuff because once he signed him, that's when Doc and Doug got in there and, you know, threw out Alan Kaufman and turned Motley against Alan, of course. Alan had put up millions of dollars just to get Motley Crue, the biggest band in California, in the Southwest, really, in Canada they toured, all on Alan Kaufman's dime. 
and then they get signed to a record label. Alan wants a cut because he's been putting in all this money. That's why Molly Crew had a big stage show and had all this crap. You think they had jobs? No, it was all Alan Kaufman. That's why I got to know him really well. It was Mick's brother-in-law. And so he's like, yeah, I th I'm into this. This I think this has got a promise, blah, 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 blah. And uh, when they get signed and all the crap, you know, happens, he gets booted and, and Doc McGee, the drug dealer, that's why his name is Doc. He used to run drugs. That's why this he supplied Motley with drugs. He he would get the dealers to follow the you know just get them you know follow the friggin' bus and when they need something go get it or have it or give it to them whatever. We just don't want it on the bus because we're gonna get searched all the time. So blah, blah, blah. So they'd have him follow him behind you know. Doc is not innocent in this. He's not. You know, like he was made out to be in the friggin' movie. He's a he's a scumbag, and he'll do anything and everything to get hit, to get it done. And that's why Gene Simmons, the guy that will not take drugs or drink, or blah, blah, even though he has drank and gotten sick, and he has eaten a bunch of brownies with pot brownies, and just got wasted. This is like in '75, I think. That's great. But then he, he bashes all this stuff, you know, and then they hire the, a manager that's a, a drug dealer. Whatever. Why do you think they call him Doc? Like that Doc Smelly guy at the... That, that stupid label, F and A. He's trying to be like a mini Doc McGee. Good luck, buddy. The only... Doc, you are is you're you know giving drugs to yourself. You're stealing all the money from the bands that you sign, like mine, and use it to get drugs. And you're high all the time, all the time. Every time I call the guys, F and A Records never sign, never. They suck, and I'm going after them, suing the crap out of them. So there you go. Uh, so. I think Motley Crue should not get back together and tour. And if they do, why are they bringing out Poison, who is an obvious poser uh, Motley Crue ripoff band? As soon as they came out, I'm like, oh, that's Motley Crue. All they're doing is Motley Crue. It's already been done. It's not going to work. But the crowds were huge. Not at first. I mean, it was like five fat chicks. And then my ex-wife, she wasn't fat, but her friends were. <laughs> and they were like, oh, look at the... They were all in love with Brett Michaels. Everybody was. And I'm like, I don't get it. Because he, he seems like a nice guy. He is a nice guy. I talked to him a few times. Like I said, I sold that guitar to CC. See, that's when it happened. When they came out, they had the other guitarist. He fell off the stage, hurt himself, and then he got homesick and went home. Then CC got in the band. I mean, they found him quick. Because I was actually going to go down and audition. <laughs> I wouldn't have fit in. It wouldn't have worked. But uh, CC made that band. If he wouldn't have joined Poison, they would have never, ever made it. He's a good enough guitar player that he made them good enough to make it as big as they did I mean they're bigger than Dawkins they did more than Dawkins did all these people about Dawkins Dawkins and George Lynch George Lynch look at friggin Poison and C.C. DeVille C.C. DeVille is actually a really friggin good guitar player if you listen to him and if he's sitting down like me that's his thing and that's what I thought was funny is when he I gave him a guitar and had a strap on it and he was standing up and he was looking and walked over to bass player guy doll because he had a green mockingbird so he wanted a mockingbird too and he's like yeah we should buy it because we're playing they were playing the troubadour on uh, it was June so school was getting out so they're gonna play schools out so Brett was trying to you know write down the lyrics and da 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 and they were gonna rehearse that 
course, I had to stay and listen. I'm like, not bad. Not good, but not bad. So my band did the same thing. We did Skulls Out, too. But uh, I think we did it better. But they had more balloons and confetti and a lot of fat chicks, man. And some good-looking ones, too, but a lot of fat chicks. But the thing is, you know, Ricky. Don't like him because he was after my my uh, first wife and I almost had to kill him but I didn't because you know, nothing happened he's a dickhead alright so that's all the talking I'm going to get that out of the way because I ha that's all I have to say about the roads oh, the, so the Concord Randy Randy was the one that came up with that that head stock design thing is is he died Everything was in the air. Everything was in motion for him to, you know, be the one to endorse Jackson because there was no such thing as Jackson guitars. He was the only one in the world that had any Jackson guitars. And he, and he's the one that drew that headstock design after the way the Concorde looks before it gets into flight and goes supersonic and the nose goes up and it's straight. Pew! The nose is down, so it looks exactly like a friggin' the Concord guitar. So I just wanted to get that out, alright? And number two, Molly Kruger on tour, bad idea. Very bad idea. Vince is fat. Nikki is, shouldn't be doing it because he just got friggin' married. His wife is pissed as hell. This is what I heard. Because she just had a baby. And now he's gonna go, uh, you know, trolloping off and Nikki is not a very good you know, loyal guy as far as he could be married and have a ton of kids and love his kids, but he's going to go out and he's going to mess up. He slept with that drummer, that Samantha chick. Nikki will, Nikki will hit anything. Almost like I was when I got, you know, really wasted, but Nikki's like that all the time. I don't know. He's 60 years old, over 60. Stop! And Mick is not 70. Mick is about 66, 67. He's not 70. Gene Simmons is 70 years old. Peter Chris is 75 or 6. Paul's going to be 70 when the tour is over. Ace Freely's playing tonight, but I decided not to go because I don't, you know, what the hell? I got one, I got to buy a car. And two, I just don't feel like seeing Ace Freely, man. I've seen him a bunch of times, and it's like, put your makeup on, please. And I just saw a video of him. He's playing Shock Me. And he just goes into the solo in the song, you know. And he hits the friggin' wrong button and turns the smoke on. And he's like, whoop, and he turns it back off, so it shuts the light off. Because there's a light and there's a smoke bomb in there. Once the smoke bomb is ignited, you can't turn it off. The light, you can turn off. So he turned the light off, but he kept playing, and the smoke's coming out. I'm like, and he's not on drugs. <laughs> I'm not going to pay a couple hundred bucks to see that crap, unless somebody gives me a free ticket tonight or tomorrow night, and he is on stage in about 20 minutes, so I doubt it. So there you go. <laughs> Also, this is my Mick guitar. I keep one of my Mick Mars guitar picks. This is what he used in the early days, in the very early days. Very thin uh, nylon, whatever they called, Kotex or something. <laughs> I don't know what these are, but I got like uh, like three of them. 
and only I know that they're mixed because one is in the case in my pick case the other two I just keep wherever I know they're mixed it's like I've got four blacky bass picks he used to use those big fat fender things they don't say anything on them but I got some you know newer Chris Holmes stuff because he was living in my garage so I just go back there and grab a bag a bag of picks <laughs>